ladies and gents, is the conclusion of our Sonic block. Coming up next is the Mega Man X block, starting off with Ajarmar and Mega Man 03. We have a $30 donation from Ash5. I'm very blessed and got to work a little on the intro animation for Sonic Mania, and that was a dream come true for me. It'd also be a dream come true to get rid of cancer. I've lost three friends to cancer in the last two years, and it hurts my heart to think of how many great people we've lost. Thanks for running such a way past cool game and absolutely killing it. We have a $50 donation from Gahul. As promised, here's the extra 50. Here's hoping it came through with my alias this time. $50 from Crazy Blob says, long live Spite Fajita or Spike Vegeta, whatever you want to call him. $30 from Clouder Siege, loving this Sonic Mania run. Go, Claris! $150 from Dino Optometrist says, longtime fan and first time donor. Congrats to all the fast, fast Sonic runners and can't wait to see the rest of AGDQ this year. We have a $50 donation from B. Wiz, donating in honor of my aunt who was recently diagnosed with leukemia. Good luck to all the runners. And with that, we are going to head over to the interview table where Edo Bean is hanging out with the runners of the upcoming Mega Man X Any% Percent race, Colonel Fatso, Walrus Prime, and Tokyo 90. Take it away, Edo. As your girl, I'm here with our three X Any% percent runners. Um, this is going to be a really interesting race considering last time we had Hundo. Um, how do you guys feel? How confident do you guys feel in, in this race? Pretty confident. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident. I don't know. I got the lower time, so I think I'm a slight favorite, but it's anybody's race. It's certainly going to be close. Hopefully I'll do okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just finish. Yeah, you guys are about like two seconds in between each other, basically, for this. So it's going to be a really, really close race. I'm hoping to see some pretty much neck and neck uh, for you guys. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go ahead and go with our Twitter questions here. Uh, first off, we got from the Luigi guy saying, who wins, X or zero? Obviously X, because every game in the Mega Man X series, zero basically dies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Spoilers. 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 <laughs> what about you, Walrus? Uh, same. Absolutely. Zero dies. It's, it's no, no question. Yeah. Same for you, guy? When he's, when he's ready, he's right. When he, yeah. <laughs> when he's ready, he's right. Don't worry. This is, X, this is the first time we see his mistakes, so he'll be fine in the other ones, right? Right? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. he'll be good. Also, we got Moby Joe, who also asked, uh, who is going for the Coinger refight skip? <laughs> guys are all going to go to that. Yeah, it's the hot new tech. It's the hot newest thing that they uh, started doing, incorporating into their run. So be sure to look for that. That's going to be in the Sigma stages. So definitely interesting. Let's hope you guys can make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> so. it's luck-based too. So Yeah. And then uh, Dushriko also asked, uh, would you say it's the hardest challenge MMX has ever offered you? I think for me it's pretty obvious. Uh, cutting the 35 and 100% has been quite the challenge but we'll get there. 2018 is the year, <laughs> guaranteed. Big year. Yeah. Big year. 
uh, for me, I'd say it was like uh, earlier in the year pushing my buster only time. This is a very difficult category to even finish a run in, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, did you see any kind of hard challenge for you for X or? Mm. No? No. Nah. Nah. Tokyo just finds this easy game easy. Game, easy, easy game, easy <laughs> <laughs> um, we have from uh, Eric Kriv Merlin. Man, I so butchered that up. I apologize <laughs> about that. Who is your favorite Maverick in the Mega Man X series? Blizzard Buffalo. I got to go with my kin, uh, Frost Walrus. <laughs> uh, I got to go with Burnin' Nomander. <laughs> burnin', burnin' love. Oh, I got to go with Beat Boon, because come on. Gravity it's just the, the Gravity <laughs> Beat Boon. That's the Japanese version. It's the best. How can you not like that? And then last but not least, who do you think will be the bigger jerk today? Chill Penguin or Storm Eagle? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Birds are jerks. Birds are jerks. That's Wexel who asked that question. No. Oh my gosh, Wexel. Of course you asked that question. <laughs> um, so I also want to go ahead and talk about a little bit of our prizes that we got going on right here. As you can see right here, we have this handmade X figurine. So stylish. And without the helmet, it's actually kind of interesting. Really like that. Provided by Jace uh, Thore. Thank you so much. If you donate $20 right now, you will get your chance uh, to get this lovely figurine. And obviously in front of me right here is the Mega Man chain mount uh, made by the Chain Nerd. And that's $25 um, if you donate. So once again, lovely prizes that we got going on during the X block right here. And you know what? I wish you guys the best of luck. This is going to be a really, really interesting match to see. You guys have been with the X community for the longest time. There's actually been an X any percent tournament going on, which is kind of like at a break right now. Now we've already got the first round. Now we're going to the second round. So I cannot wait to see what's going on with that. I wish you guys the both of luck. All thank of you. luck. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you guys so much. And uh, we will see you guys next. So uh, Mega Man uh, 03 with Ajamar. So I wish you the best of luck. Good luck, Ajamar. Go get him. Get him. Thank you, Edo, and best of luck to all of our Mega Man X runners up later tonight. First up, though, we have Mega Man 03 with a Jarmar. We have $10 from AJ Guy. This Sonic Mania run is way past cool. Claris is killing it. $50 from Fried Kasawari. Loved the Sonic block. Can't wait to see the Mega Man block now. Good luck, runners. Thanks, everyone behind the scenes and the announcers for all their amazing work as well. $10 from Kingdom 190 with a desperate plea. Save Meryl, please. A $25 anonymous donation says, good luck to all the runners. Thanks to everyone at GDQ, keep going fast. $20 from Sithy, long time watcher, first time donor. Love AGDQ and all the community coming together for a good cause. So excited for the Mega Man block and I want to run the marathon, even though I usually want to be the bocce. Save Otakon.
$25 from Worcester Both. Hey GDQ, been a long time watcher and fan and finally managed to donate. Watching past GDQ VODs helped me through a rough time and I'm so glad I get to watch it again, live this time. So glad I was able to do this during a run of Sonic Mania, one of my new favorite games and with Spike Vegeta on the couch too. Good luck and have fun everyone. Put this towards saving Otakon, we could all use a little bit more of him in our lives. $20 from Tomaltak. Mega Man Block is my favorite. Same, buddy. Absolutely same. $30 from Chinchill. Long time fan and not my first time donating, but this time it's personal. My nan has been diagnosed with breast cancer after being clear for nearly 30 years and is just starting treatment. Let's crush this terrible disease so nobody ever has to say it's come back. $10 from Super Saiyan Fife. Hyped for this Sonic Mania game. Good luck to Claris. This 10 is going to getting more Yoshi's Island in the mix. $150 from Latino Otaku reads, So hyped to see my favorite game, Mega Man Zero Three, run this year. Good luck to the runner. $5 from Anonymous. I've never enjoyed a game like I enjoyed Sonic Mania. Here's in memory of my grandmother who passed from cancer many years ago. Also, Pickle, Albuquerque, Albatross, and Truffles. Hearing the announcer read words is fun. Fifty anonymous dollars read huge time Mega Man fan, especially of the X series. So glad to see the relay back this year. Use cancer's weakness, donations to get rid of it in record time. Twenty dollars from Goo Three R. Got to donate during the Mega Man block. Love AGDQ. Love everything you guys do. My hats off to everyone. Some quick uh, bid war updates here. It seems like Save Merrill is starting to run away, but it is definitely not too late because you have until the end of the Mega Man X block to keep getting those donations in. So if you want to save Otakon, you still have time to fight back. $150 from Boxmeister. Greetings from the Netherlands. As a huge fan of Zero, I got to donate during Mega Man Zero Three. Let's dive into the action like a cannonball. $11 from Chaos Taran. I donated last night in memory of my mother who passed away from cancer 11 years ago and with Sonic being one of my favorite games growing up, I thought I would make the quick decision to donate $11 each day during AGDQ. Here's to going quick and to announcer's choice.
$15 from Adam Wester. This goes out to my friend Justin. Thanks for introducing me to this event. All right, it looks like we are ready to kick off our Mega Man X block with Mega Man Zero Three run by Ajarmar. Let's take it away. Oh shit! Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You wanna introduce yourselves? Oh sure. Uh, my name is Rename. I'm Orsa. Yeah, and uh, my name is on the stream, I think. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Good to go? Yeah, we're good to go. Okay, cool. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right, well, uh, this is Mega Man Zero Three. Uh, there's a lot of technical aspects about the game, but one big thing that we'll be focused on pretty early on is the scoring system. Uh, we want to make sure that there, you have an A rank throughout most of the game, and to get that A rank, we need average of 86 uh, throughout the uh, stages, or make we're sure to get the A rank for the end of the stage. Yeah, if you exit a stage without an A rank, you won't be receiving the boss's EX skill, which is super duper important in going fast on these boss fights. And it also enables us to get their weapons too, which we need a handful of those. So the intro boss here, Omega, he's not too difficult. Uh, the most important thing here is you'll see a Jarmar charging the saber and the buster simultaneously. Uh, he'll be using the saber from close and the buster from far to try to keep him in iframes as much as possible. And um, also in addition, one of the other aspects of the game is the combo system. And what that means is pretty much every single one of Zero's attacks is assigned a different value. So for example, his uh, pellet shot is one and the charge saber is two. Um, and then his triple slashes go on from there. So pretty much what you want to do is keep using attacks that increase in value because they actually stack and go through the uh, bosses or enemies' iframes. So if you do like a pellet shot and then do a charge shot and go back to pellet, it actually won't work because you're going reverse in that order. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be seeing a lot of combos that we use throughout the game and you pretty much you need specific attacks in specific orders to maximize your damage. Yep. And uh, right here we just got the recoil rod. Zero says it looks like it's pretty easy to use. We'll be getting a glimpse of that later on. I'm sure Jarma would agree with that. Yeah. No. And uh, first up on the Mutos is uh, Hecbat Shilt. Uh, <laughs> a pretty annoying boss, but see, for the most part, you're going to be seeing Majarmar getting a lot of extra, or just enemy kills. And uh, I think yeah. you can explain in addition to that, that helps with the rank and among other things. There's a lot of things that go into your score, like a lot of different factors. The most important ones are uh, how many enemies you defeat, how much damage you take, how fast you defeat the boss, you know, things like that. Um, there's also some objectives in some stages, like in this stage, these turrets are objectives. Each one gives you five more points towards your rank. So let's you build up score a little bit early here. And uh, right there, that chip he picked up is actually 100 energy crystals. And I think we need 200 total to get um, certain cyber elves that we're going to be picking up throughout the game. We need to equip those to us to uh, help us out throughout the course of the game. Mm -hmm. And this beehive boss here, just wait till it opens up. Hit him with a couple charge shots. Yep. There's no luck here. This boss opens up consistently on every cycle, and there's some really nice visual cues to get through it quick. Yeah. Good, good. And uh, coming up, and I believe we actually went through some, but the you're going to see some jump pits coming up, and uh, Jarmar is going to do what's called uh, terrain glitching to get through those. And normally when you hit a terrain like that or some quicksand that's coming up, it'll actually like eat your momentum and you can you have to like right there you have to move at minimal speed. But if you hit jump and dash, like on the same frame, or jump a couple frames before dash, you can actually keep that dash momentum and dash through that terrain. So it's an easy way to get past that. Yeah, so this first boss here, Hellbat, is kind of annoying, uh, especially if he gets away from you because he has a lot of teleport moves. Um, Ajarmar's gonna be manipulating him though. 
By skipping that cutscene, he resets the RNG to a consistent spot, so he'll know exactly what the boss is going to do, and hopefully be able to take him out before he teleports away here. Very nice. Cool. <laughs> And uh, a minor thing, at the end of every screen, or at the end of every boss, you get this screen, and you want to mash through the text, but if you mash one time too many, you're actually going to progress through that screen before clicking those discs that he did. And if he doesn't do that, you actually have to go off screen and into another room, and then talk to another character, identify the disc, and then go out and then equip it. So and it's a huge time loss that it's pretty easy to get because you can mash too much sometimes. Definitely. Then we got Blizzard stage coming up. And this is a good example of just how much execution plays into this game because pretty much the first half of the stage is all on one global timer. So starting from the beginning, you pretty much want the exact same movement um, every time you run through because you're going to see some lava pillars coming up here. And if you're off by even a little bit, in the middle of one of your jumps, one of these lava pillars is going to shoot up and you're either going to run into the lava or get pushed up into those spikes and die. So you got to make sure you're very consistent every time you run through this stage. Yeah, we come to this stage second for a couple different reasons. The most important one is there's going to be a cyber elf here coming up that Ajarma is going to want to grab. It's going to decrease his charge time, which is going to be really, really handy and throughout the whole game pretty much. And of course, efficient menuing is a part of it too. So since he's putting on the lightning chip and he's got to switch to Pogo, um, you want to condense all of that into one menu. And right there, that down stab you saw him use there, that's Devil Bat's EX skill, uh, the Saber Smash. Uh, it's really good, it does a lot of damage, and it's usually the final move in a combo because it has the highest priority. <clears throat> and right here, it's a little minor thing, but you're noticing he's going to be killing all of these, mostly with buster shots uh, instead of saber smashes. Because even though the saber slash could be like more efficient because he's up close to it, you actually waste four frames every time you kill an enemy with a saber. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like much, but it adds up a lot. And I believe yeah. you got to kill 26 or 25. 25. And you get four frames of hit lag every time you hit something with a saber. So if you saber everything, that's 100 frames you lose just due to lag in that play. <coughs> And that was Clockle that uh, Orsa was talking about earlier. Yep. We don't want to use him right away because it'll consume him, it'll lower our score, and we'll only have him for this stage. So in the next stage, you'll see Ajarma actually spend some E-Crystals to turn him into a Satellite Elf, which makes his effect permanent, and you'll be able to see him following you around after that. And I believe that also helps the uh, manipulations too, because like the dust that falls from yeah. him, something like that. Yeah. Blizzard, uh, very quick window to be able to get all these uh, hits in on him, but he got it. Mm -hmm. Quick kill. Very nice. Good stuff. Okay, and now we have Death Tans, Mantis coming up. Uh, this is really the first good example of how annoying mid-bosses can be. Technically that beehive thing was a mid-boss, but it's not really too bad. Um, with pretty much all the bosses in this game, we're able to uh, manipulate their pattern to be exactly how we want by skipping a cutscene right before it. But we can't really do that with this boss here. So you're going to see after this room, Ajaramar enters, um, there's going to be a section with falling platforms, and he's going to try to fall through that in an exact way to make sure the uh, worm mini boss gives him the pattern he wants. Yeah, so skipping that cutscene resets the RNG to where we want it. So now his movement has to be pretty precise until he hits the mid boss to get the right pattern. Should be good. That looks good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the first part of the stage, this is the first spot you'll really see a whole lot of recoil rod usage. Uh, the recoil rod's a pretty strong weapon in its own right, but it can also be used for movement to pogo around, either off of the ground or off of an enemy, and you get a bunch of height if you pogo correctly, so it's really useful in a lot of spots. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're coming up on Death Tans right here. Um, and one thing you may not notice, um, there's going to be a section or a part where he drops down a cement block. And we're purposely going to be hitting a part of that to uh, change his pattern. So we get the uh, pattern we want on this guy. Yeah. Whenever he chops wood, if you, if you let him chop three times, he'll do something different than if you let him chop twice. So. Yeah. Yo, you want to read the donation? <laughs> I can do that, and we have plenty. We have $25 from R and Jeff left. Always fun to watch the Mega Man X block, and can't wait for the Mega Man X race. Donation goes to Donator's Choice. It sure does, doesn't it? This is a pretty interesting stage here. Um, a continuation of a lot of a pogo usage coming up. Um, a lot of spikes. You pretty much just got to memorize the stage and where all the hazards are. You just know where they're coming to be able to avoid them. Um, and once again, there's a mid-boss coming up here. It's a little easier because there is a cutscene right before it. But you're going to see Macharmar doing a lot of um, like damage boosting. He's going to run into the mid-boss just so he can be like inside the boss's hitbox to be able to get a down slash, like an extra hit on there to make the boss go faster. So it's a uh, way to get a lot more hits in, but you're going to see once he tanks it, he's going to take a lot of health off. He's going to do that a few times. Well done, well done. Very nice. And uh, the recoil rod as a sub weapon, just like the shield boomerang and the buster and the saber, they all have their own EX skills that you get from various bosses. Here you'll be seeing uh, Mantis, which is a recoil rod skill called a thousand slash. It's actually really good for DPS, mostly because it combos into itself. So like for example, you can do a charge saber and then just mash the recoil rod on the ground to get a bunch of free damage off here. And uh, sort of related to the block in Mantis, uh, Mantis stage, uh, when you move around here, you're actually creating bubbles. And every time one of those bubbles come up, it uh, messes with the boss's manipulation. So we want to make sure, in addition to be able to killing him, you don't want to generate a lot of bubbles. So that was good. Well done. Alright, so those are the first four mudos done. Um, this game sort of has three sections of 4-3-4. Four, four. So in between here, there's going to be a little mid-stage where we have to defeat some baby elves. Uh, this stage is pretty tough. There's a lot of high health enemies and a lot of melee pantheons here. I guess we should mention melee pantheons. Um, compared to the ranged ones, they have 5 HP and your air slash only does 4. But you'll be seeing a Jarmar kill them in one hit by doing a thing called an extended jump slash where he slashes in the air and then continues to hold down, which deals an additional damage, so it does five and can one-shot them. Yeah, and that's the guys with the little electric rods. Pretty short but interesting stage, riding on top of a rocket here. Yeah, the boss coming up is actually really cool. Um, they'll be fighting two different baby elves, one on each side. And while they share a health bar, they have their own individual iframes. So you can sort of just run back and forth, combo one, then combo the other to defeat them really quickly.
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One of the hardest parts of the game there. Try not to save on accident. Okay, then we got some throwback mutos here from Z1 and Z2. Um, their stages are pretty similar to yep. their original sure. part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two of these guys have really good EX skills. Uh, you want to do Stagger Off and Honey Machine first because uh, Anubis is actually sort of weak to Stagger Off's EX skill, so we want that first. Um, but as far as doing Stagger Off or Honey Machine first, it really doesn't matter. The only difference is like where you want to pause and switch weapons. This is one pause menu faster, I believe. Yes. In general, this is a pretty tough stage, though. Uh, you'll see in this part coming up, there's a lot of enemies everywhere, a lot of tall enemies, a lot of HP and spikes above and below. And you're going to see some pretty precise pogoing uh, from a Jaramar as well, just bouncing off of enemies on lower floors to quickly ascend up to floors above them. Yeah, so this boss here is pretty annoying too. Uh, Stagger off deals a lot of damage. You have to damage boost into him to go fast. And he does this big blizzard beam at the start, which if you get caught in it, then it starts slowing you down. So this is a scary boss. Yeah, nice. Got him though. Next up we got Hano Machine, a pretty short stage, but this shows off the uh, additional usage of the recoil rod where we're going to push blocks onto switches. Yeah, at the start here we got some hidden platforms behind the trees. You can burn the, the leaves to see where they are, but if you know where they are then there's really no reason to do that. So. Of course, the danger with these sections here is if you're not fast enough, they'll crush you, but for the most part, it's pretty well routed out, so it's not too big of a concern anymore. Yeah, just don't go too fast. Yeah. You'll be okay. And before the boss here, you'll actually see him switch to Buster and to Light Chip. Uh, Buster is actually pretty useful on Honey Machine because you can sort of buffer a charge to hit him. Honey Machine has a really annoying pattern where he likes to dash around and be invincible. So any damage you can get while he's not dashing is really good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Close by. <laughs> yeah. Do I have time for a uh, longer donation here? Sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we have $5 from Irregular Ginny. Hey, everyone. Great job so far. Great to finally see 03 at a marathon, as it is my favorite Zero game in the series. And here is a message for a Jarmar if Proto can read this. Full disclosure, my experience with Swedish is counting to 12 and parroting the Stockholm subway, but here goes. Lika till manen, ser fram emot en fantastic. Fantastisk speedrun av dig för det vet hur man leverar en bra run. Hoppas de andra svenskarna dyker upp snart mid för att repa serie. If you got that proto, I'll donate another five during the MMX race. Good luck everyone and maybe I will catch some of you at ESA Winter or Summer or next AGDQ. Love, Ginny. Donation goes to Rebel Dragon's Choice. Gotta rep the Kingdom Hearts community as well. I hope that was good enough. Sure, I understood that too. <laughs> And uh, actually, this part here, it's showing off. Uh, is that Blizzax? Yeah, That's both it. actually. Um, That's true. Yeah, Blizzax is the sort of the Buster icicle attack. 
Um, and Honey Machines is the up slash, which is pretty much a bread and butter combo. Is a triple slash up and then down. I've seen that a fair bit. Additionally, um, I guess ideally for like a casual play, you would use the light body chip to go through this stage. And that's the green one, um, and that will pretty much negate all movement impairment by these quicksand hits. But um, ice is useful against not only the mini boss but also Anubis as well. So we go ahead and swap to ice early on in the stage to get rid of a menu, yeah. and we just use terrain glitching to bypass quicksand. You can actually one cycle this boss before he even goes into the sand, but it's incredibly difficult to do. Yeah. Um, ice, the ice is pretty awkward to combo with since you sort of need to string savers in between the ice hits. But that was solid. Yeah. Two cycles, fine. Yeah. Okay, and then coming up next, we have Copy X's stage, which is arguably. One of the, if not the hardest stage in the game. Just the typical spikes everywhere level. Lots of moving platforms and things like that to navigate. So it'll be interesting. here so you can skate along the spikes. Yeah, the gimmick of this stage is that there's like these laser security systems that spawn these spiky balls that come at you. Um, they do a lot of damage, but they're not too threatening, consider they die in one jump slash, so you can kind of just slash your way through them. This next section is really cool. Um, there's a lot of cool pogos here. I'm getting nervous. Jeez. <laughs> All right, nice. Maybe. So this boss here is, he has a really, really annoying attack that he will always do whenever he hits a certain health threshold, which he'll try to heal his entire health bar back. But you have a couple of frames to interrupt it. So this combo here is going to be structured around trying to interrupt his heal. Nice. nice. Got well, it. Yeah. It works. Yeah. It's easiest to do with the thousand slash, but you can do it with the saber yeah, smash too. Clap. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Who's next? Uh, Who is next? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the best boss in the game, Glacier Lacac Tank, uh, the official mascot of Z3 and the Z3 speedrunning community. Everyone's favorite. There he is. A uh, very relevant $50 from Currybon. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Currybon here, along with everyone in the Zero speedrun community, wishing a Jarmar luck on the run. Shoutouts to Rename and Orso with the couch commentary. Cack Tank hype! <laughs> it's a pretty cool stage in general. Um, a lot of quick movement dashing through. And you're going to see him pitching a ride on some of these snowboards coming up. And there's a, an important chip coming up as well. Yeah, he's going to be grabbing a, a disc out of this box, which is going to give him a quick charge head chip. Um, it does stack with Clockle in some sort of a weird way, but you'll be seeing him equip it later on, and we'll talk more about it then. Yeah. There he goes, hitching a ride with Cactang Jr. Yeah, the one really nice part about this stage is that the sleds make it so that there's a lot of enemies in your way that'll die pretty quickly if you're on the front of the sled. So if your score is a little low here, you can pick up some pretty free points here. So you can get some health too. Yeah. Nice. Oh. And a little lore on uh, Cac Tank here before we get to him. Um, You'll notice he's a uniquely shaped boss, and that's because 
Uh, his purpose, aside from being a judge, is to store water in his body there and bring it to remote areas that need it. Uh, but previously he was a judge that was pretty fair and had nice rulings on people. But when Dr. Whale took him over, uh, he started pretty much giving everybody death sentences. So we're going to try to issue him a death sentence right here. Poor Cac Tank. Yeah. He'll be back, don't worry. I'm clapping for you, Rene. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at the very end of that fight, uh, Rene menu er, renamed it Menu, it was, a Jarmar yeah. menu, and he <laughs> equipped uh, the light body and the quick uh, foot chip. Is that what it's called? Quick foot, yeah. yeah. Um, that's going to be useful in the next stage. Um, mostly what that's for is you can cancel the triple slash into the up slash directly without having to wait the animation out. And that's going to be really nice for the mid boss in the next stage. And these stages here, uh, Fox Stars, in my opinion, starts really the hard gauntlet of this game. Uh, the rest of these stages are pretty long and have either a lot of mid-bosses or just like convoluted mid-bosses. Um, and the bosses themselves are pretty annoying. And then, of course, you have the final stages after that. So it's a tricky run to begin with, but it really sort of amps up at this stage. Yeah, and there's some brand new strats in this stage that you'll be seeing. Um, that buster skill that Ajarmar is using is Copy X's, it's called Reflect Laser. And Ajarmar actually just came up with some new strats like a week or two ago in these button rooms to get some extra hits with the Reflect Laser. Oh, oh. oh. Nice to see it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. He also equipped a second cyber elf there. Uh, that second elf is a bird elf. Uh, what it's used for is if you fall into a pit, it'll save you. Um, that's handy in a, I don't know, a couple spots, I guess, in yeah. the case of pits. Mainly but the mainly the final boss it's going to be useful for. We equip it here because it uh, affects the final, the fox star boss's pattern here. Another very, very tight pick right here. Oh. Uh, the legendary three cycle. <laughs> <laughs> Rarely seen. So this next section is pretty sweet. The intended strat here is to ride these uh, metal girders through and sort of dodge the enemies, but it's pretty slow. So we can take some damage boost on these bombs. Oh, it's Pretty tight, maybe yeah, I just yeah. using the uh, iframes to skate over them, Spike. There we go. Nice. <clears throat> and then uh, not much of the stage left, but you're going to see on this next vert vertical section that other abuse of iframes to just scale up a spiked wall to save some time there too. You see, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, the two elf fox star pattern is way better than the one elf. There's one attack you really want to avoid where fox star will kind of like go invincible and break apart into this big fire pattern. Uh, thankfully, the two elf pattern is pretty significantly better. Yeah, it's pretty much just two of these. Yeah, there we go. And then we got Calvarian coming up next. Another very long stage. Um, there's going to be a lot of equipment changing at the beginning too. Yeah, so at the start here, you're going to see him. He's going to equip the quick charge headpiece, uh, which will only stack with Clockle if you're on neutral body. So he's going to switch to that as well. And he's also going to equip the double jump foot chip that he picked up from Foxstar. And that saves, oh my gosh, so much time throughout the run. You'll see him use it pretty much everywhere. Want to shout out a $200 donation from Mr. Wutski. 
Donating again this time from a new school, the students here at McGrath Elementary put together our spare quarters to see these games get destroyed. Let's beat cancer. Okay, this section here is the elevator section. Oh, Almost man. died there. Yeah. Thank goodness for that bird elf. <laughs> yeah, that's an example of that, where the uh, bird elf will just pull you out of a pit whenever you fall into it. Um, but this elevator section here, the enemies do fall in a regular pattern, so that's why Jarmar is able to jump up and pretty much hit them before they even pop on the screen. And uh, an issue with this section is since there's so much movement going on in the background and enemies exploding and things dropping, um, you may see in the next section there's actually lag that'll build up. Gotta Fair try to bit. avoid that. Yeah. This mid boss here is pretty annoying. Um, he has 96 HP, but takes double damage when he's on his side, so that's why you'll see him push him over. But he really can't be manipulated, so you kind of just have to you know, take whatever he gives you. One more quick elevator section here. A lot more enemies, though. Yeah, here comes the lag. Yeah. You can sort of aid that by picking up the things that drops, but I mean, in some situations, it's not worth it to go out of your way to pick it up. Plus okay. Yeah. yeah. We got another short section here before Calvarian and. Uh, Kelvarian is a pretty unique boss. He doesn't really work like some of the other bosses in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's made up of three dogs, so he has three health bars and one for each dog. Um, and he also is very big and has a very small hitbox. It's pretty much just his head. Um, so you'll see a John be taking a lot of damage boost here to get inside him and get access to his head. It's pretty much just a slugfest. You want to be close to him taking damage and just try to deal more damage to him. Like he did. Good stuff. $25 from Zach K. Mega Man Zero 3 is my favorite game of all time, so I'm real hyped for this run. Took a week off work so I wouldn't miss anything this year, and it's been well worth it so far. <coughs> Okay, and coming up next is Volteal, um, and there's actually a piece of tech that got, got worked by Jarmar recently. It's a pretty big breakthrough for this stage, um, and I may mess it up, so if I'm saying something wrong, be sure to interrupt me here, but uh, see, the stage itself is pretty standard. It's going to try to go through it as fast as possible, but there's a section coming up to where there's eight randomized doors that you're, there's four of them that you want to go into. Um, and for a long time, it was pretty much just chalked up to luck. You just went through every door and just tried to get lucky that you got the doors you needed where they were. Um, but a drama was able to find out based on a light that's outside and where it flickers. Um, if you enter the door at a certain time based on that, you get... There's pretty much a table of patterns that are available, and based on when you enter the door, you can look at that table and know the exact layout of the doors you're going to go into. Yeah, so he stopped there for a second and looked at the light. He's trying to hit a very specific frame whenever he hits that door, because on specific frames, that's when the game decides where the doors are going to be. So if you hit the same frame every time, the door layout will be the same every time. And if you go to this stage, ideally, um, you're pretty much always going to get the same layout. But since that's not always the case, pretty much after checking the first two doors, um, if a Jarmar isn't already you know, like aware of which pattern he's going to get, he's pretty sure what he's going to get after checking the first two doors. Nice. Yeah, this is the best point you can get, pretty much. Nice. Nice. Yeah, the one other thing that's really nice about this is you can see the red rooms have different layouts. Like, one of them had a U in the bottom, that one is sort of like a stair pattern. Um, the last room is the one you'll always fight the boss in, and if you can get a flat room to fight the boss in, that's going to give you the best pattern, so... Because you'll be able to use the newly acquired Gale Attack, which is Calvarian's EX skill, it's sort of like a saber dashing charge, um, and it does a whole lot of damage, but you can only really use it if the terrain suits it. So here you'll see it. Um, 
the reason it's so good is because it combos into itself, just like a thousand slash does. But each hit does six damage, so that's 18 total damage, which is a whole lot. $10 from Quest. Had to donate during my all-time favorite Mega Man series, Mega Man Zero. This bit of cash is going towards getting some more Yoshi's Island. And with that, that should be all the eight mutos taken care of. So we just got to revisit to the double babies after some cutscenes here. Yep. You won't see any of this, but you got to talk to Sage Harpuya, and you have to talk to Steel here as well. But you can skip all the cutscenes and go straight to the stage. Another pretty short stage, but once again, it's riddled with spikes. So you'll see a Jarmar just sort of floating through this whole section here, avoiding all the spikes as if it's no big deal. Uh, there's a lot of zigzag rooms here, so you'll really be able to see just how strong Reflect Laser is if you know where it's going to go. And then the second baby elves fight here is pretty much the same as the first, except now we have a bunch more skills and techniques, so uh, the fight's going to be hopefully even faster than the first one was. Yeah, same rules apply. Um, same health bar, but different uh, iframes, so just pile all the damage in each one. And for some reason, this is the only cutscene we can't skip. It's supposed to be a very touching scene, I guess. But <laughs> really doesn't come across that way. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's the final stage already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was quick, man. Mm -hmm. So in typical fashion, we got refights coming up, um, and they are scattered throughout a uh, main stage, which is also very annoying. Once again, a lot of spikes going on on the stage. Uh, but it's a pretty short walk to the first set of refights. So the refights, uh, the way they're laid out is pretty much how they're laid out in the main game. There's two sets of four teleporters with some sort of stage platforming in between. Uh, the first four are the first four we fought, which would be Hellbat, uh, Childre, Mantis, and Flizzard. And all of these guys are Gale attackable because the terrain allows for it. So the most important thing in these fights is spacing because you need to be able to get all three hits off without taking damage and interrupting your Gale attack. Yeah, it's pretty much just the same bosses, but since we have so many more techniques and weapons, most of them are going to be going a lot faster. Yeah, you'll also see them start with a reflect laser on most of these bosses. It's really easy to carry a charge into the refights just by holding the button, and that makes it so that you need only one less scale attack hit, so there's a little bit more leniency then. I think these other two bosses are pretty much the same, so this would be a really good time for donations if there are any. Yeah. Oh, trust me, there are plenty. The people <laughs> love Mega Man. Nice. The people have good taste, if I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. Have a $50 donation from Ongaku Overdrive. I always love watching Mega Man block for GDQ. Let's bust some cancer. And DJ Squarewave donates $150. Had to donate while my buddy Rename was on the couch. Best of luck to all the runners. <laughs> Thank you. See, this is the last refight here. And uh, I brought up before that um, you want to avoid the bubbles in his original uh, fight. But this one actually, uh, you noticed him walk a little bit beforehand. But that's because the bubbles are actually factored in to the manipulation on this one. Yep. Yeah. Since bubbles advance RNG, you want a very specific amount of them, which you can get just by walking forward a little bit. And I messed it up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> we didn't notice. It's good. Yeah. Uh, and this section here is very annoying because, in addition to spikes and these enemies all over, there is icy terrain. So he's going to need a terrain glitch a lot to get past it. Yeah. 
Once again, the Reflect Laser putting in a lot of work too. Just going all around the corners, taking care of the enemies. Yeah, so the second four here are the last four, which would be Cactank, Foxtar, Calvarian, and Voltiel. Um, two of these guys are Gale attackable, the first two. So here's Cactank again. Welcome back, buddy. <laughs> a little remorse there. I think, yeah. <laughs> Can't believe he's dead. Uh. And the order he's doing these in is based off just pretty much health, right? Making sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The only thing that really matters is that you're doing Voltiel last, because since Voltiel's terrain is forced to be sort of uneven, you can't really Gale attack him at all. Yeah. So you need to switch to Ice. <coughs> in sort of the same vein, Calvarian's going to be coming up here, and he can't really Gale attack him either, since his hitbox is too far off the ground. Um, so Jarmar is actually going to be doing a little manipulation here where he'll plink a P shot off of him. Um, that'll roll the RNG to get a much better pattern. Cool. We just got Voltio coming up. Voltio and then Omega. Yeah. Swap into the ice chip there. Um, in addition to what Orsa said, we're also going to be using the uh, wait, what's it called? The spike icicle move. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, yeah there you go. Oh, there. Okay. Oh, there. Which will also come into play on uh, Omega One. I keep wanting to say ice javelin, but that's not it. <laughs> Isn't that from another game? That's Z Four. Yeah. Z4, yeah. Another quick section here with some blind falls into spikes, and then we got the last couple bosses coming up. So there's going to be three quick bosses here. Uh, the first one, Golden Omega, is sort of the same, sort of the same as the intro boss. He has some different attacks, but because of the pattern he gives, you won't be seeing any of them. And then the next one, the second form, is where the bird elf's going to come in handy. You see, there's this pit beside him, so if we were to try to saber smash him, we'd just fall in the pit. That's where the bird elf's going to come in handy. It lets us just go up, down, and then in the pit, and then repeat. And there was also that pellet shot I think you mentioned before mm -hmm. at the beginning to make sure he lights a better pattern. Yeah. And then after this is a really tough boss, so... Yeah, time, time is coming up, though, as soon as this guy's health hits zero. As soon as this guy's health hits zero. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, this this is a very scary boss, though. Yeah. I think he can kill you in like a combo of two hits. Yeah, he can actually combo you. Yeah. Like that. Time. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, good stuff, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, time actually ends there, but uh, Omega is somehow still alive. Uh, I'm gonna finish him up for the fans. Uh, <laughs> and I also have a few shoutouts I wanna give, so I'm bringing up my notes here. Uh, uh, first of all, to Kirban and Will for helping me out a lot when I first learned this game. Uh, and uh, also to Rename and Orsa for commentating my run. Uh, as well as everyone else who runs T3, including QTT6, FS Lynx, BXP, We Forgot, Darko, Ova, Trogdor, Maple, Streiser, Mr. Cab, Vinicius, and Pachi, uh, and the rest of the Zero community. Uh, and a special shout out to Tonic for organizing the Triple M event last year, which gave a lot of attention to this series. Uh, and lastly, uh, also to all of my speed friends, including those from RTS, the collective, the classic Mega Man community, uh, the Sweden community, the Mystery community, as well as the Worm Boys. <laughs> okay. There we go. Nice. Hit him with nice. a back attack. 
All right, I'm done. See ya. Cool. You can cut away. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. All right, that was an awesome, awesome run by Ajarmar. I love Zero Three. I don't know about y'all. That was so good, so cozy too. Um,